Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's me again, and welcome to part three of this CRP5 series. Today, we're going to be looking at volume conversions. We're going to simply be looking at how to convert liters up there to imperial gallons down there and US gallons down here. And once we've done that, it shouldn't take us long, we're going to be looking at these two arcs here. This SPG is specific gravity. There's one over here to measure specific gravity in kilograms and there's one over here to measure specific gravity in pounds. Uh, the specific gravity is effectively the fuel density. I'll explain why that's important a bit later. So let's get on with this nice and quickly and ask ourselves the question how many litres are there in an imperial gallon and how many litres are there in a US gallon? So I'm sure you figured out how to use this now, it's very straightforward. We are going to find our number one and we're going to line that up against our imperial gallons line just here, this arrow, and then we're going to spin this upside down and we should read off 4.54 litres. And if we check that we can see there's 4 litres, 4.12345, just under 4.55, so 4.54 litres in an imperial gallon, nice and easy. Uh, next, US gallons. So I'm going to line my one up there with the arrow for US gallons, which is just down there. Again, line up our arrows. And again, all we do, we simply keep this where it is. And again, we're just going to read off how many litres are there in a US gallon. And that should be at 3.78. And if we just move that up a bit, we should be able to see that there are indeed 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, and just under uh, 3.8. Uh, officially it's 3.78 uh, but 3.8 is more than good enough um, as a general rule of thumb and you can round it up to 4 uh, for basic mental calculations. So once you know those basic conversions 3.78 litres in the US gallon and 4.54 litres in an imperial gallon you can then start asking yourself questions about fuel density and mass. Why is this important? Well, as a pilot, you are going to be filling the tanks of your aeroplane. And you're, if you're flying a light aircraft, which I guess you will be if you're watching this video, you'll be flying something like a Cessna 152, Cessna 172, uh, Robins, Piper Warriors, Piper Cherokees, Archers, Arrows, Duchesses, Senecas, something like that. And you're going to be filling your tanks full of fuel. Now, let's be honest, as a pilot, do you really care how many litres or imperial gallons or US gallons are in your aeroplane? I personally don't. Um, what I do care about is the mass of that fuel. How heavy is that fuel? I don't really care if I've got 50 gallons or 60 gallons or 70 gallons. As long as I've got enough fuel for the endurance that I require, plus reserves, um, the amount of fuel, although obviously important, uh, is not as important as the mass of that fuel because from a mass and balance point of view you need to be able to determine that your airplane isn't too heavy you're not going to be overloaded and if you've got too much mass on the aircraft then you're going to struggle to meet your performance requirements for both takeoff, climb and landing. So that brings us on to specific gravity and as I said earlier in the video specific gravity is nothing more than fuel density. So next question is why is fuel in density important? Well it's important for the simple reason that the kilogram, the standard mass of the kilogram used to be defined as one litre of water at four degrees Celsius because four degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water is most dense. So if I have 10 litres of water I know that it weighs uh, 10 kilograms or it has a mass of 10 kilograms which is fine, eh, give or take small temperature deviations here and there, but on average one kilogram um, is equivalent to one litre of water, or I suppose I should word it as one litre of water is equal to one kilogram. Now the problem with fuel is that like oil, you'll, you'll all be aware that oil floats on water, and oil, diesels, aviation fuel are all lighter than water, they have a lower density, uh, they therefore have what we call a specific gravity. Now a specific gravity uh, is effectively a relative density where water has a relative density of 1 and the specific gravity is a number between 0 and 1 so for example something which has a density half that of water would have a relative density or a specific gravity of 0 
Uh, a Jet A1, which is a fuel used by lots of commercial jets these days, has a specific gravity of approximately 0.81 on average and the stuff that you use in your small light um, single engine or multi-engine piston aircraft at least in the UK we use Avgas uh, 100 LL and Avgas has a specific gravity of 0.72 so let's pick a, a fairly straightforward example those of you who fly um, Piper aircraft PA-28s or anything um, you'll know that within the fuel tanks you have tabs I'm not sure if you do in Cessnas actually, I've only flown Cessna a few times, I guess you may do. Uh, but in the in the Piper Warrior uh, we have tabs and you fill the aircraft to tabs. Now according to the POH, the Pilot's Operating Handbook, the tabs are, are equivalent to 17 US gallons of fuel. So my question to you is, if I put fuel in my PA-28 in both wing tanks and I fill them to tabs, question how many litres of fuel do I have and how much does it weigh? Well let's find out. So I'm going to turn this upside down again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to 17 because there are 17 US gallons to tabs so 17 US gallons and if I turn it upside down we can see that that is equivalent to 61, 2, 3, 4 that's 64 and a half litres. And again, ask yourself the question, as always, does it make sense? We know that there are very approximately four litres in a US gallon. Uh, so if I've got a 17, 17 times four is very approximately 65 or so. So yeah, I'm absolutely happy with that. Um, I think the exact number should be 64.5 litres. Now remember, I've got two tanks. So if I fill both tanks to tabs, I've got 64.5 litres times 2, which should be 129 litres. So the next question is, now I know how much fuel I've got in my tanks, now I've filled it to tabs, how much does it weigh? Because this is what I'm going to have to put on the mass and balance sheet. You've also got the basic empty mass of the aircraft, plus the mass of all the passengers, the cargo, or baggage I guess you would call it in a light aircraft, and the mass of the fuel, which is very, very important and we can use the CRP5 to work this out if we know the specific gravity of the fuel and if we're going to load up a PA28 with Avgas we know that the specific gravity of Avgas is about 0 0.72 so uh, we're going to do this per tank so we've currently set this up for 17 US gallons for one tank which is equal to about 64 and a half litres and if I want to work out what that weighs in kilograms I simply look on the outer scale here we've got 70, 75 80, 85 and 90 which are representative of uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 etc. And I'm going to line this up with 0 0.7, 0 0.71 and 0 0.72 and that will tell me that 64.5 uh, litres of fuel which has a specific gravity of 0 0.72 weighs 40, just over 46 kilograms about 46.2, 46.3 kilos. Okay. Uh, again, we've got two tanks. So assuming that was 46.3, that's going to give us about it's just just over 90, 91, 92 kilograms of fuel in both tanks. Now I'm aware that kilograms to most of you won't really be that useful for the simple reason that the POH, that's the Pilot Operating Handbook, and most mass and balance sheets, at least in the UK and worldwide, are in pounds, simply because most training aircraft are American, and Americans use pounds. So we simply use this scale over here. And we don't have to move the CRP5, CRP it's already set up. If you've calculated it in kilograms and you want to do a simple conversion, um, there are 2.2 pounds in a kilo, so you can just take whatever you've calculated in kilograms, multiply it by 2.2 and there's your answer. If you want to use the CRP5, which I guess will be the whole point of using the uh, watching this video, you simply keep the CRP5 set up as it is and again on the top you'll notice we've got 70, 75, 80, 85, again that corresponds to a specific gravity of 0 0.7 etc. And we line this up with uh, 0 0.72 and we read off on the inner scale that tells me that's about 102. 
so it's about 102 pounds and does 102 pounds make sense well yes it does I said that there is about 46 kilograms equal to 0 0.72 and we said there are 2.2 pounds in a kilo so I'm expecting something over just over 90 I'm getting about 102 again let's use a calculator just to double check it uh, 40 was it f oops sorry uh, 46 point three times 2.2 is about 101.8 so 102 is good enough so I now know that 17 US gallons of fuel which if I want to I quickly spin this upside down I can convert that to imperial gallons if I wish it's not required but 17 US gallons is just over 14 imperial gallons I said that was equivalent to 64.5 litres which assuming the specific gravity of 0 0.72 is equal to about 46, 46 and a half kilograms which is equal to about 102 pounds now obviously remember you've got two tanks and a PA-28 so you'd have to double that to make sure you know exactly how much mass the fuel weighs in your aeroplane because the mass is critical and believe it or not that's it it's nice and simple so that's how you do volume conversions and that's how you use your specific gravity or fuel density arcs on the CRP5 to convert volumes into masses and you can always work backwards as well to calculate a known mass of fuel into volume now practically speaking you'll never have to do that that might be an exam type question um, but practically speaking litres, imperial gallons, US gallons and conversion into kilos and pounds for your mass and balance sheet. Any questions don't hesitate to ask, stick them in the comments and keep posted and I'll put up more CRP5 videos very shortly. Thank you.